very well-known chapter in the Bible, Luke chapter 15. We'll begin reading this morning, verse number 11. The Bible says, and he, had a, and he said, a certain man had two sons. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. And he divided unto them his living. Not many days after, the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country, and there wasted his substance with riotous living. And when he had spent all, there rose a mighty famine in that land, and he began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into his fields to feed swine. And he would have fain have filled his belly with the husk that the swine did eat, and no man gave unto him. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. Thank you, Lord, for the youth choir singing. Thank you, Lord, for the good special singing. Thank you for a good Sunday school hour. Father, thank you for good report from our jail services this morning. Thank you for being a good God. God, we're without excuse not to bless you and thank you and appreciate all your goodness. Uh, God, I believe we'd have a great revival in our land if your people would just get grateful for the goodness of God. Now, God, forgive us where we take for granted your blessings. We take for granted the goodness of God. Now, I pray for the next few minutes you'd put a hedge about us this morning. I pray that, Lord, uh, we would not just have ears to hear, but our ears would be open to the truth of the Word of God, uh, and, God, we'd receive it with gladness, uh, and, God, we'd allow the Word of God to do a work in our hearts and on our lives. Uh, Father, you know every need of every heart here this morning. And God, I pray that you'd meet those needs. I pray in a crowd this size, if there's somebody that does not know the Lord Jesus Christ, as Lord and Savior, that today would be the day of their salvation. Uh, they'd come and trust in Christ uh, as their Lord. I pray, that, Father, if there's somebody here today that is saved, but they're seeking uh, the mind of God or the will of God for their lives, it would be revealed unto them. I pray if there's somebody here that is struggling, that, Lord, uh, you would give them something to strengthen them that would help them in their struggles. Uh, Father, if there's somebody facing obstacles, uh, you would give them the direction on how to uh, overcome their obstacle. Whatever the need is, Father, I pray uh, that, God, you would meet every need. Uh, now, Father, use this unworthy vessel. Father, glorify your name. Uh, Father, do a work in our hearts that is eternal. Uh, and, Father, help us this morning uh, to be blessed to sit in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Uh, have your will and way, Lord, and we'll thank you for it. Uh, for it's in the wonderful name of the Lord Jesus we ask these things. Uh, amen and amen. I want to draw your attention to this wonderful text. Uh, we find in uh, Luke chapter number 15, there are three primary topics the Lord Jesus teaches on. Uh, he teaches on the lost sheep uh, and how uh, uh, the good shepherd left the 99 and he went and he sought for the lost sheep and brought him back to the fold. Uh, we find that there is the, uh, uh, the teaching on the lost silver where a woman loses uh, something very valuable and she sweeps the whole house uh, until she finds that lost silver uh, and it's precious to her and she's able to meet her needs with it uh, and then the chapter concludes with the lost son uh, here we find the prodigal son uh, 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 he finds himself in a mess uh, and uh, we find that uh, the story of the lost son uh, deals with rebellion uh, and it deals uh, with restoration. Uh, uh, can I say this uh, story uh, uh, depicts the father uh, displaying endearing love, uh, expecting love. He's sitting out expecting one day his son will come home, uh, embracing love. When the son comes, uh, he embraces him, he falls on him, uh, and he kisses him. Uh, and then enthusiastic uh, love uh, as he called for the fatted calf to be uh, 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 slain uh, and, and to be prepared uh, and for him to bring a robe uh, and a ring and shoes to put on his son. He said, this my son who was lost now is found uh, and it's an enthusiastic love. Uh, we find the prodigal son 
has his haughty spirit turned into humility. Now I want to look at it a little bit different this morning. Now I'm glad most of our young people are sitting up front because I want to get a good look in your eyes when I'm preaching this morning. But I want to try and help you to avoid some of the things that this young man experienced in his life. Um, but this isn't just for young people. It's also for all of us. And then I'll probably deal with uh, the father in a little different light than you've ever heard him dealt with. I want you to notice in our text, first of all, the arrogance. Look at verse number 12. We find the younger son of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. And he divided unto them his living. What arrogance that this young man is asking for his inheritance before his father even dies. Matter of fact, if you uh, uh, study the law and study under Jewish law, uh, the entire inheritance goes to the firstborn son. The younger son uh, is only uh, going to be blessed if the older son divides anything to him. But here this younger son has so much arrogance, he's asking something that is not even rightfully his. Can I say, young people, when you go to mom and dad and you ask for their car so you can drive the car, that's not your car. You want a car? Get a job. Oh, I see you shaking your hand. Your parents, you taking notes of that? They're all shaking their heads. McDonald's is hiring. Get an application today, huh? Huh? We see the arrogance. Can I say in his arrogance, he's exultant, he's full of pride. Mm -mm. Can I say that the problems of America today is a pride problem? And I'm not talking about a rainbow pride. Mm -mm. Can I say the Bible says that every contention go forth because of pride? And we live in a divided nation with all kinds of problems and all kinds of contention because America forgot who founded it. His name wasn't George Washington. His name was Jesus Christ. America was founded on the principles and oracles of the Word of God. People boarded the Mayflower and other ships to sail treacherous waters to come to a land they'd never seen for the hope of religious freedom. My dear friends, America has forgotten that. He's exalting. He's full of pride. He's exasperated. He's impatient. He's not willing to wait. Any of y'all like that? Huh? You're barring against your allowance and you had not even done your chores yet? Hmm? Colton's like, what's an allowance? Huh? Huh? He's impatient because he's arrogant. Can I say something else about his arrogance? He's, he's acting entitled. Can I say what's wrong with this generation? We have an entitled generation. You know, the problems going on on our college campuses wouldn't be going on if they were there, actually there trying to uh, uh, learn something so they could better their lives so they can get a good job. Hmm? We've got a bunch of spoiled brats feeling entitled in America. They want everything mom and dad worked 40 years for. They want it all given to them. And uh, listen, I don't put all the blame on them because we've had a government for 30 years that have been giving it to them. Uh, I'm trying to hold the thoughts back that are in my mind right now about some of the things going on in our country. I want you to notice he's arrogant. I want you to notice also the audaciousness. Look at verse number 13. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country, and there wasted his substance with riotous living. That word audacious just means he's wasteful. You know why he wasted it? Because he didn't earn it. You know what's wrong when you give everything to them? They don't earn it, so they don't appreciate it. It didn't cost them anything. They have no skin in the game. Therefore, it doesn't mean anything to them. Uh, 
But if you had to work for it, uh, 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 Brother Ed, I don't know, I imagine you had to work a long time by your first car. Uh, and when you got it, it may not have been the shiniest car in the street, uh, but you worked to keep it up, and you worked to make sure it got you where you needed to go. Uh, uh, nowadays, you, you go out and you buy them a car, and if they go to Ryle High School, you can't buy them ones like we had when we were kids. huh? Uh, uh, I mean, they got to have something shiny and nice and, and newer. Uh, and uh, you give them a car and, and watch and see how many times they change oil in it. They don't change oil in it because they don't think about keeping it up because they didn't have to earn it. Doesn't mean much to them until it breaks down. Then they want to borrow yours so you can fix theirs. Hmm? Some of you are bowing your head and we ain't even got to the message yet. He's wasteful. He's wild. He's unbridled. He spends everything on riotous living. That's not being a good boy. He's gone wild. He's unbridled. He's unhinged. Uh, if it feels good, do it. That's the philosophy of Satan, and that's where he's at. And can I say this? He's wicked. Matter of fact, when he does come home, the older son's got a problem with the younger son. He's got a lot of bitterness in his heart. He's got a real problem, too. Uh, 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 but he's uh, 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 even reminds his dad that his uh, uh, younger son's been out there uh, with harlots and everything else, been wicked. One writer said this, Sin will take you farther than you want to go. Sin will keep you longer than you want to stay. And sin will cost you more than you want to pay. Can I say the devil paints a pretty picture about the far country? Devil paints a pretty picture about kids that don't go to church. Oh, there's a beautiful billboard of them having a good time, uh, but he never shows you the backside of the billboard. Uh, never shows you what it's going to cost you. For the wages of sin is death, my dear friends. Uh, nothing good comes from a wicked life. Uh, hey, there's pleasure in sin for a season, uh, but the pleasure runs out very quickly, uh, and you're left with a lot of scars. Uh, you're left with a life uh, of regret and a life that you wish you'd have never went down that path. Uh, we see the arrogance. We see the audaciousness. Notice the aftermath. Look at verse 14. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in that land. Let me stop right there. You know what's wrong with being your age? You never think about tomorrow. He went and blew everything he had. And then all of a sudden a famine comes and he doesn't have anything. There's one person in here I have confidence in is not going to blow everything they got. It's that young lady right there. She's got every dime she ever made. You still owe me five bucks. You know that, don't you? Uh, when you spend everything you've got, you're not putting up anything for tomorrow. You talk to Brother Ed Pierce about his generation. See, so come up in a generation uh, uh, where they taught you, uh, 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 you don't know what a day brings forth. Uh, and they taught you uh, uh, life can be hard uh, because his parents came through the Great Depression. Uh, his parents didn't have anything. Uh, and they taught you how to work hard, uh, taught you how to save, uh, taught you not to be thrifty uh, uh, because uh, one day you're going to need something. And if you waste it all, you won't have anything. Mm -hmm. The Bible said again in verse 14, And when he had spent all, there rose a mighty famine in that land, and he began to be in want. And he went and he joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into the fields to feed swine. And he would have fain have filled his belly with the husks that the swine did eat, and no man gave unto him. Can I say that the aftermath shows that he sobers up in verse 14. He's wasted all and now a famine's hit. And he's about ready to start rethinking his position. We find that in verse number 15 that he becomes a slave. 
He joins himself to a citizen of that country. He enters into agreement with that, country, uh, that man. Uh, if you'll take care of me, I'll work for you. I'll become a slave to you. In the first place, the fellow sends him out to feed the swine. If you know anything about Jews, the worst thing a Jew boy, the worst place a Jew boy can find himself is in a hog pen. Hmm? A hog was an unclean animal. They don't want to have anything to do with it. Matter of fact, I probably shouldn't say this, but I'm going to. We had a problem with some Muslims in America and upstate New York back when Teddy Roosevelt was president. They caught some of them in insurrection, and Brother Jim, they, they found them guilty, found them, sentenced them to death, and they hung them. And they took their bodies and they buried them in pig carcasses. Brother Jeff, there was no more insurrections after that. Because hmm. see, in their religion, if you're buried in a pig carcass, you can't go to your Muslim heaven. Of course, we know, believe in what they believe, they're going to hell anyway but it sent a message to all the other ones. You know what would do real good on our, these college campuses? If we had somebody that had enough guts to send a message. Most of them aren't college students anyway. They're being paid. They found that out that in the University of Texas of Austin that uh, the people they arrested that were protesting weren't even enrolled in the school. But they all got real nice tents and they all match and everything. They got an agenda and they all do the same thing on all these campuses. Why? They've been taught and they're being paid to do it. Somebody needs to send them a message. Hmm? That would stop a lot of it. But we got too many politicians that don't care. And too many people in positions of authority that do not care. But that's a whole other message. We find that he becomes a slave. And in verse 18, he finds himself starving. He would have ate what the pigs ate. Now, I know you don't believe this. I grew up in the country. I know what pigs eat. I've never wanted to go to Cracker Barrel and say, give me a plate of slop. <laughs> Fill it up. Uh, let me have some swine husk. Let me have it. Throw a little gravy on it. Uh, nah, pass. Uh. I won't eat Chinese food. I'll eat Thai food. <laughs> Hallelujah. We're going to have some on the 19th. Thank you, Brother Jay. Night, Thank you, Mr. Night and day. Night and day. Glory. Yeah. All right. Thai food? Sushi? Tabasco? Then the yeah. Food. It's hog slop. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm with you, brother. I'm with you. Finds himself starving. This is what I want to preach on. I want you to think about this young man. I want to preach on this thought. I want to preach on brokenhearted and bankrupt. Can I say this young man finds himself in a hog pen? As a matter of fact, the next verse, he comes to himself and said, Even the servants of my father's house have it better than this. He's brokenhearted, and he begins thinking about a better time in his life. But he's not only brokenhearted, so's the father. We don't know how long it's been since the son left. We don't know how long it's been uh, for him to run out of money and live a riotous life. Uh, we have no indication from the Word of God uh, how much time has been taking place. Uh, but I can promise you, every day that father's had a broken heart for his son that's out there somewhere in a far country. Uh, he not got any text. Uh, he's not got any emails. Uh, he hasn't got any letters. Uh, he's not got any word. Uh, all he knows, uh, his son is left uh, and he's out there. He don't even know if he's alive anymore. Uh, and the father every day sits on the porch broken hearted. Uh, and I say he's not only broken hearted, he's bankrupt. We see that that young man spent everything he had. He's bankrupt. He has nothing to draw from. Can I say he's not the only one bankrupt? So is the father. The father divided his portion of living between his two sons. Uh, but more than that, uh, he's bankrupt of spirit uh, because that darling son uh, that he loves more than life uh, is gone and it's ripping his heart out and he's bankrupt. Uh, so with that in mind, let's look at this. Brokenhearted and bankrupt. Can I say today... One is headed for bankruptcy when lacking esteem. 
That word esteem is another word for respect. People that have low self-esteem have low self-respect for themselves. And can I say, when somebody is lacking respect, they're headed for bankruptcy. Can I say, he had a lack of respect for authority. He did not respect his father. He looked his father in the eyes and said, Give me the portion of goods that falleth me. Uh, he did not respect his father, did not respect all that his father had worked for, did not respect uh, uh, that his father knew best what to do with it. Uh, he thought he knew best. Uh, he could care less what his father thought. Uh, and he wanted his way right now. Uh, can I say, uh, we've raised three or four generations now uh, that do not respect authority uh, they do not respect the teachers in the classroom uh, they do not respect the police officers on the street uh, they do not respect uh, uh, the pastor the man of God who preaches to them uh, they do not respect their parents uh, there is a lack for respect of people in authority uh, uh, in our young people uh, uh, they want what they want they want it right now uh, and if they don't get it they're going to throw a temper tantrum uh, because there's no consequences for their actions. That's where we live today. Wasn't that long ago we was at a store and this little kid was acting up. I mean acting up because mama didn't want to get her some candy or a toy or something. You could tell mama was making every dollar stretch. And this kid was acting up, acting up, acting up. Not on my nerves because I'm behind her. And you know me, I got a big mouth, couldn't keep it shut. I looked at her, I said, ma'am, would you like to borrow my belt? <laughs> well, then I became the criminal, you know what I'm saying? Right. Uh, let me help some of you mom and dads in here. The Bible does teach if you spare the rod, you spoil the child. Uh, I'm not talking about abusing your children. I'm not talking about beating your children. Uh, I'm talking about correcting your children. Uh, and the Lord's given a good padded backside there uh, uh, that you uh, 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 wear that thing out a time or two and explain to them why they're getting worn out. Uh, guess what? They'll quit acting the way they're acting. Uh, it don't take many uh, uh, for them to know what's going on. Uh, they start acting up in church. Come here. You're acting up in church today. Put that aside. Come here. Uh, hey, let me show you how to correct them. Uh, uh, come with me, young man. You're acting up. Come on. We're going right out here. All right, bend over. Grab your ankles. Bam, bam, bam. All right, come back in here. You sit down and shut up, because next time I take you out, uh, you ain't coming back in. You got it? Now sit down there and behave, huh? You do that two or three times, they'll get, they'll get an understanding. Hey, the worst thing you can do, brother, right? You start crying and acting up, is me run you down to nursery and let you play. Right. Yeah, that's going to cause every service. I'm going to act up because I know I get to go play. Uh, and you're teaching them uh, to disrespect you and disrespect authority. Can I say this is God's house? Uh, hey, when they come in here, they ought to respect the fact uh, they're at the greatest place they can be at. They're going to hear about Jesus. Uh, and we've come to worship. Uh, we haven't come to play. Uh, we haven't come to mess around. Uh, hey, uh, this young man uh, had a lack of respect for authority. Amen. You know why? You don't learn to tell them no. You don't learn to really correct them. And by the way, correcting them is breaking their will. You don't always have to wear them out to break their will. Amen. But you've got to break their will. And if you don't break their will, when they get up to be teenagers and give you a mess, don't bring them to me and ask me to straighten them out. It's too late then. Yeah. Huh? And by the way, Mom and Dad, while I'm on you, don't... Uh, be talking about people in church like they're dogs and expect your children to respect them. Don't talk about the preacher like he's uh, 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 the all scour of the earth and then when they got a problem, bring them to the preacher and expect them to listen to what the preacher has to say. If you don't respect authority, they're not going to respect authority. Well, that didn't cost you anything. You okay, Xander? It didn't hurt you, did I? Next time I will. Uh, can I say 
There was a lack of respect for authority. There was a lack for respect of acceptance. You say, what are you talking about, preacher? I'm talking about they don't accept the fact that they have a reputation. They have a character. It's either good or it's not good. And if you don't care what people think about you, you're going to be a mess. If you don't care uh, that people know you come to church and you don't care what they think about you uh, uh, when you're away from church, uh, if you talk like they talk, if you look like they look, and you act like they look, you have no respect for the name of Christ that you carry on your back. Amen. You ought to care what people think about you. Jim, take her out and beat her. <laughs> I'm just teasing. She liked that idea. She was smiling. <laughs> Listen, you ought to care about what people think of you as a Christian. Uh, you all think I'm crazy, but you ask my kids. I used to take them to the mall and see some of them freaks with the, with, with the peacock hair and, and, and all this stuff going on. and I mean, piercings everywhere and all this. And I said, you come home looking like that, we're going to have a problem. We're fosters. We don't look like that. Hmm? Mom and Dad, you ought to care enough about your name to tell them how they need to act. Say, well, I don't want them to grow up and hate me. Then you better correct them. Because uh, if you don't correct them, they'll grow up and hate you. Hmm. And I say, I don't have a lack of respect for authority and lack of respect for their acceptance, but a lack of respect for the Almighty. You're to raise your children in the nurture and admonition of the Lord so they grow up respecting God. There are some things, even in my age at 60, that I'm afraid to do because I respect Almighty God. And the Bible says it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of an angry God. God will take me out right now. I don't want to disrespect God. I say you're headed for bankruptcy when lacking esteem. Can I say you're headed for bankruptcy when there is no example? When there is no standard, no rules. Mom and dad, you ought to have rules in your house. You know what your children want? They want to know what the rules are. Now, a lot of times they're going to try and live as close to the line See what they get away with. Just snatch them back over where they need to be. But they do want to know what the rules are. The problem with children, when they start becoming rebellious, is when you keep changing the lines. Let your yeas be yea and your nays be nay. Can I say when there is no example before them, there are no standards no rules, they're not going to be right. They're headed for bankruptcy. I say as pastor of this church, there's some rules we have. Can I say there, there are rules that have been adopted as far as our church could dating back to 1971? We abide by those rules because they line up with the Bible. But can I say, as the pastor, I have some rules. People will not have a position in church unless there are certain things they abide by, which are biblical. And if they don't abide by it, then they're not going to hold a position in church. They say, you're a dictator. No, I'm just going by the Bible. And we have a standard. I don't care about any other church down the street. This is the one that I'm going to have to give an answer for because God allows me to pastor, and you're going to have to give an, exam, uh, an answer for the Bible. And can I say today, I'd rather please God than people. And there is a standard. Not just everybody gets to teach here. Not just everybody gets to sing in the choir here. Everybody's welcome to sing in the choir. But there are certain things you must abide by. Not just everybody gets to get up on the platform and sing a special. Not just everybody gets to take part in certain things. Why? Because their life don't live up to the rules. Well, it got real quiet there. Say, what kind of rule? Well, number one, you've got to be faithful. 
Hmm. What good is it if I've got a Sunday school teacher and it only shows up once time to teach? i tell you what good it is. It's good for him to sit down or her to sit down because she's not going to be teaching long. It's amazing. Everybody wants to do something, but they don't want to keep the rules. So they're not faithful. Now, let me move off that couple passed out on that one. They don't mind me taking Xander out and wearing him out. They have a problem with rules. Can I say there's no example? There's no subs subsequent or no consequences. Hmm? Let me have you some. Lucas, a bad day, sit on the front row, son. <laughs> One, two, three. Okay, Christy, you got to take care of him because, you know, I'm Tommy and I can't do anything with him. <laughs> There's no consequences. One, two, three, don't get it. Because even if they know there's a consequence after three, they're going to wait for you to get to three. You know what it was at the foster household? I didn't even get one up. There's consequences if you break the rules. Hmm? Brother Ray, I bet you had one, two, three, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> you got a lot of one, two, three, four, five, sixes, huh? What I'm trying to say is there's going to be consequences for your action because there is in every facet of life. Brother Brian, if you decide you're going to take a, a week of vacation when you don't have vacation, you don't even call in and tell them you're not coming, guess what? You go back to work, you might not have a job. There's a consequence for your action. You just can't live however you want to. Uh, you know, this isn't very popular, but uh, what uh, a lot of these college kids uh, don't realize that they're doing when they're getting arrested and getting exposed, uh, their names are going on terrorist lists now. Uh, and when they go to apply for a job, guess what happens, Miss Marcy? Uh, no, we can't hire you. You're on a terrorist list. There's a consequence for you being lazy and trying to act like an idiot on a college campus. Huh? And by the way, in America, we fly the red, white, and blue. Huh? And I think if they burned the red, white, and blue, they had to burn some time in jail. You're welcome. That didn't cost you anything either. There needs to be consequences. But when there's no consequences, uh, when uh, uh, Brother Tommy can count to 355 and nothing happens, guess what he's going to do? Keep doing wrong. No consequence. He shouldn't even have to get the one. And you lose your phone. How many of you young people got a phone? That's part of the problem right there. <laughs> you're spending more time on that than you are on anything important. And you're more worried about what somebody thinks about you that you've never met on, the, on that than you are about people that do know you. Huh? But you don't... What chores do you got? What are you supposed to do? Dishes? Yeah, right. <laughs> trash? You don't take the trash out. You lose your phone. I shouldn't have to tell you to take the trash out. You lose your phone. You don't take the trash out next week. You lose your, your PlayStation or something. Don't take the trash out next week. You don't sit down for a while. <laughs> hmm? Sooner or later, you're going to remember to take the trash out. Huh? Because there's consequences. Huh? Your mom and dad work. They work hard. They ask you to do something, you ought to do it. They give you a roof, they give you food, they give you a phone, they give you a PlayStation, they give you a, a dog pound, they give you everything, son. Y'all got more dogs than anybody ever seen. There ought to be consequences for our actions. Hey, Junior, did the chief tolerate you being lazy? No. You know how I know that? Because you're not lazy now. Hmm? You know how I know she taught you right? Because you don't waste things now. You don't even buy stuff. You just wait for people to give you stuff. <laughs> that's true. That used to be my jacket. I know. That's true. Uh, that's a good thing. So you don't have to stand out on the road and say, you know, we'll work for food. Just come to church and look, you know, be faithful and just look a little pitiful and people give you clothes I mean it's a blessing no you don't look pitiful can I say there's no example there's no standards there's no subsequence no consequences there's no separation 
the Bible is still the Bible, and in 2 Corinthians six seventeen, still in the book, Wherefore come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. We're not to act like the world. We're not to look like the world. We're not to smell like the world. We're not to be the world. We ought to be the envy of the world. The world ought to desire what we have. Uh, we ought to show the world peace, love, joy, temperance, uh, uh, gentleness, goodness, meekness, uh, uh, the fruits of the Spirit. Uh, everything that they're really longing for, they ought to see it in us. Uh, can I say? Separation is not what I withhold myself from. Separation is who I separate myself to. I should live the life I live to please Christ. God help us to have some examples. But when there is no exa example, you're headed for bankrupt. All right, kids, I'm going to give you a break right here. Mom and Dad, this is for you. This is part of the story I've never heard till the Lord showed it to me. One's headed for bankruptcy when they're enabled. Look at verse 12. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. And he, the father, divided unto them his sons his living. Hmm? Can I say? The father accepted the disrespect from the son. I don't see anywhere in that verse where the father said, No, shut up and go out there and milk the cows. No, the father did exactly what he, The father rewarded his disrespect. The father enabled this young man to get to the far country. He accepted the disrespect. He ascribed to his demands. The young man didn't ask for it. The young man said, Father, give me. He demanded it. And the father said, Okay. Here. Hmm? He enabled this young man. All the heartache and the bankruptcy that this young man faces happened because the father allowed it. He enabled it. He, if you will, paid for it. Can I say? The Father enabled him by the actions he had set before him. Evidently, this son hadn't seen enough in the Father to want to stay at the Father's house. He didn't realize what he had at the Father's house until he hit the hog pen. Now, I'm going to give you a break. Brother Adrian, every child has a will. We can raise them right as rain, but that doesn't mean they're going to turn out right as rain. They may have to end up in a hog pen to realize what they had all along. Adam and Eve raised Cain and Abel exactly the same. One turned out good, one didn't. They have a will. Young people, at some point you're going to be making the decisions for yourself. What choices you make is not on mom and dad anymore. They're not on brother Doug anymore. You are claiming to the world that you are wise enough to make your own decisions, and when you do, just know they come with consequences. But can I say, many young people turn out the way they turn out because of mom and dad. Now, this generation don't face it as much as my generation faced it. But both of my parents smoked for 60 years, and they're sitting there drawing on a Pall Mall and say, don't do this, boy, this isn't good for you. You know what most kids would do? What mom and dad's doing. I just happened to be an athlete. I hated the way it smelled and didn't want to have anything to do with it. But how many have said, hey, don't do what I do. This isn't good for you, only for the kids to end up doing it. Huh? Mom and Dad, why do you bring them to a Bible-believing, Bible-preaching church when you allow things in your house from other denominations and other things that don't use the Bible? 
you're telling them, well, that's just Brother Doug's opinion on the Bible. It's okay. Other people, they have opinions too. Make up your own decision. Huh? Why would you do that? Huh? Why would you bring in music into your home that is called Christian music, but it's not God-honoring? Matter of fact, they'll watch mom and dad listen to that music and act a certain way to that music. But when good godly music at church is being sung, mom and dad sit there like a knot on a log. By the way, if you've got unbiblical things in your home, no wonder you don't worship when you get around the real thing. Hmm? Boy, getting real quiet in here. Huh? If your mama listened to a bunch of so-called contemporary Christian music instead of the music she listens to, you wouldn't enjoy getting up there and singing them songs in the choir. Huh? You'd be wanting some of that window washing junk. Huh? Your mama go and listen to that junk. She'd be plodding and saying, oh, this is great. One raising her hand and she'd come to church. She'd sit there like a knot on log because she's got the wrong spirit. Hmm? I'm telling you the truth whether you want to believe me or not. Right. Your kids are going to head for bankrupt, uh, bankruptcy spiritually. They're going to end up in a hog pen somewhere uh, and you're going to stand around and scratch your head saying, I did everything right. Uh, no, you enabled them. Uh, can I say this? Some end up bankrupt because they're enticed. Some are lured. Never lose sight of the fact the devil is slick. Adam and Eve walked with God Almighty in the garden in the cool of the day, and yet that slick-tongued devil uh, caused them to turn away from the promises of God and believe a lie. That's why I'm preaching this way, Mom and Dad. You need to have some standards. You need to have some rules. You need to have some uh, gumption about you because your kids are at stake uh, and the devil's got them in his uh, bullseye uh, and he knows just what to offer them uh, to get them to the hog pen. Let me tell you something, young ladies. Listen to me. Every one of you are beautiful. Don't get to thinking you're ugly. Don't get to thinking, Bella, you're ugly. Young ladies, don't get to thinking you're ugly. I don't have to worry about this crowd. They've got too much esteem right there on that row. <laughs> the devil sends some strapping young man, tell you how pretty you are and everything after the devil's tried to make you feel like you're ugly. Nobody wants to be around you. You're beautiful. God made you beautiful. Don't listen to some sorry, no good young man. You wait till God sends you a godly man. And you have a home that's godly. Oh, God will bless it. They're lured to bankruptcy. The devil knows how to get these children. You young men, don't get so consumed with things of the world that you lose sight of having Jesus as your Lord. Amen. You're all special. God loves you. God has a plan for your life. Walk with Jesus. Resist the devil. He'll flee from you. And I say, they're enticed, they're Lord. And they end up bankrupt by lending their eyes and ears to things they shouldn't see and listen to. And I say, you start looking and listening, you'll end up lusting after it. I heard Cody Zorn say this about Lot and how he ended up in Sodom, and it works for this young man, and how he ended up in the hog pen. First, he looked at the far country. Then he started leaning that way. And what wrong he was living there. You'll never end up there if you don't look after it. 
Mom and dad, don't give them things of the world in your home that causes them to lean after it. It won't be long they'll be living there. And you'll be scratching your head wondering, how'd they get there? Let me say this, I'm done. We want to end up bankrupt, broken hearted because they exempt themselves from any personal accountability. We live in a day and age where we want to blame somebody else for all of our problems. It takes a village to raise a kid. No, it doesn't. It takes a village to mess one up. But we live in a day and age where nobody wants to accept the blame for their actions. I'm going to give you three verses, and we're going to have an invitation. Matthew 12, 36 says, But I say unto you that every idle word, word that men shall speak, they shall give an account thereof in the day of judgment. Romans 14, 12, So then every one of us shall give an account of himself to God. Those of us that are saved will go to the judgment seat of Christ. And the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5, 10, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. Those that aren't saved go to the great white throne judgment, and every sin they've ever uh, ever committed will be brought up, and they'll be judged according to their sins. Listen, I will not give an account for any one of you. I'll give an account of myself before the Lord. And what I've done with those things he's placed in my life. So will you. This young man that ended up bankrupt, broken hearted, because of choices he made. Choices that he may not have had to make had the father had enough backbone to say, No, son, that's not for you. One day, I'll give you a portion of goods when you're ready, but you're not mature enough yet. The father and the son both brokenhearted and bankrupt over poor choices. This morning, you had a purpose in your heart. I'm going to follow Jesus. I'm going to let the Lord make the choices for me. Therefore, I never end up in this world's cesspool and hog pen but I'll stay in the center of the Lord's will. That ought to be every desire of every Christian to live in the will of God. Are you there today? If not, it can be by getting things made right with the Father. Let's all stand this morning. If you're here today and you're not saved and God spoke to your heart and you realize you need to be saved, you come, we'll get somebody to take a Bible and show you how to be saved. If you're here today and you're saved, You ought to desire in your heart not to end up bankrupt or broken hearted, but end up serving the Lord. Folks are coming. Let's have a word of prayer. Our Father, we bless you. Thank you for the word of God. Lord, I know this was a stern message. Lord, I really didn't want to preach it this morning. But Lord, it was a needed message. Lord, our lives are in the balance. And left unchecked, Lord, we'll all end up in a hog pen. Lord, there are parents that need to take time of assessment to see if they're parenting properly. There are young people that need to take assessment. Are they following the right path? And Lord, there are people that may not be a child and they may not have children of this age, but they still need to take inventory of their life. Am I setting the example for Christ for others? Am I where God would have me to be? Grandparents ought to care about their grandchildren. Great-grandparents ought to care about their great-grandchildren. Lord, we need to realize no man lives unto himself and no man dies unto himself. But there are souls in the balance. We as members of this church ought to never cause any of these young people to stumble over our life and end up in a hog pen. 
You ought to be examples and in samples for them. You ought to love them. You ought to be kind to them because we don't understand the pressure that they're facing in this wicked world. God blessing this invitation now. Have your will and way. Speak to hearts. We'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Did you know that IBC is now on iTunes, TuneIn, SoundCloud, and Google Play? Head on over to your podcast provider and subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.